Good morning everyone, it's great to be with you all again. Uh, it's pretty cold but today I want to talk about what I've learned over the past couple of years that I've started getting into wildlife and bird photography. So let's get to it. Yeah, it's been a fantastic couple of years. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, I've learnt things that I never even knew existed three, four years ago. And getting out into nature, seeing all the birds and everything, it's just been fantastic. So what have I learnt? Well, I've learnt more about cameras than I even knew existed. I've seen people with these big massive cameras and thought, why bother? But now I've got more into it, I know why. <laughs> anyway, what equipment do I use? Well, a lot of you regulars would know I'd use a Nikon D500 and my main lens for wildlife is a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary. Uh, the range, the aperture ranges from f4 to 5. Point, sorry, f4 to 6.3, I believe. Which I'll get more into all them numbers a little bit later. This may end up in two videos, I don't know. It, I've learned that much. So, my camera. This is my Nikon D500. Obviously it may have been Nikon. It's not the beginner range. And it's not the pro range, I don't believe. It's more in between. Nikon do a crop of 1.5 which means on full sensor it the 1.5 like zooms you in so with this lens being a 150 to 600 at the longer length, length the 600 it effectively becomes 900 millimeters at the shorter end the 150 it's about 225 I believe so you get a lot more reach with a crop sensor than you do a full frame. Because if I were to put this on a full frame, it'd be just the 150 to 600. So I can get closer to the birds with this lens than I can if I had a full frame camera. The lens, like I said, it's a 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary. These two versions of this lens, the contemporary and the sport, the Sport is a lot heavier, but it's made a little bit better. As in quality of the reviews I've seen, there isn't too much between them. But the contemporary version that I have is a lot lighter than the Sport version, which is why I opted for the contemporary. But yeah, it's a fantastic lens for what I've been using as you've seen some of my images before and I'll put a few that I've taken over the few couple of years that I've been doing this and I hope you agree with me that my images have been gradually getting better. I've learned about my settings like ISO, aperture, uh, white balance. Now ISO a lot of people think that it's an acronym but apparently I found out it's not an acronym, it's just what they call it. ISO is just a word, ISO. I wish it was an acronym, <laughs> because it'd be sometimes a little easier to figure out why ISO. But anyway, ISO ranges from the bottom end, which is, I think you can go as low as 64, right up to... 45, 50,000. But one thing you have to remember, the higher the number, the more noise and grain you can introduce into your cameras. Now modern day cameras have got a lot better, as in the ranges 
that you can go to before you start seeing this noise. Now my camera, I'm happy with going up to nearly 3200 ISO because um, these imaging software out there that help to reduce noise. I sometimes use one of them called Topaz D Noise. I can put a link down below in the description for people who are interested. You can get a free trial of this software but I tried it once or twice and just ended up buying it. I love I love it. It's helped me out with some images that you won't believe. Yeah you can see other videos on it on YouTube as well. But yeah, back to the eye, so um, I usually try to keep mine, like I say, around the 3200 mark or below. I prefer to be within the like uh, 100 to 1000 because that's where I found that my camera works the best. Now everyone's camera is different, but if I keep mine below 1000, I don't see noise in my images, which is fantastic. Incidentally, um, stick around to the end because I've got some fantastic news I'd like to share with you all as well. So just keep an eye out for that. Anyway, what's next? Uh, aperture. Now, aperture is the size of the opening within the lens. It's like a small round ring. And I could at first I could never get my head around it because that's where your F numbers come in like F5.6, 6.3 and so on and I thought well why is 6.3 smaller opening than 5.6 surely it'd be the other way around the larger the number the larger the hole but someone explained it to me you have to think of the aperture like the pupils of your eyes. You walk into a dark room and your pupils get bigger. Hence, so you can let more light in so you can see what you're doing. A camera works exactly the same way. So the smaller the number, the bigger the opening. So you go out into somewhere where it's really bright and you want a higher number, maybe F22 if it's direct sunlight. That makes the aperture ring really small. So it lets in less light because if you to open it up, you've got a risk of blinding yourself. I mean, you, one thing you never do is look at the sun through a camera because you'll burn the retinas of your eyes and that's it. Good night. <laughs> Not as in die, but you you're blind it works a bit like a telescope does a camera but yeah uh, so you want to direct some light you want to make your aperture smaller which is a higher number say f22 f18 I don't know I think some cameras can go up to 24 26 I'm not too sure and the darker the image the bigger the aperture so that would be like f5.6 or f2 for some prime lenses where it's these really big ones and they can let in a lot more light hence why a lot of people like to go for the prime lenses a they give better quality and b you can take images in lower light and it works out best for both worlds but at the moment I can't afford <laughs> the prime lenses as much as I'd like to but yeah that's a little bit about aperture I hope that helped some beginners out um, what next white balance now I use uh, a little button on top of my camera called white balance I have about four or five settings I think it goes uh, from direct sunlight to cloudy to incandescent to inside and so on. Your cameras will probably be different, you can find white balance settings in your manual or just play around with your camera, I found that's the best way to learn sometimes but like on a day to day it's, there's a little bit of cloud around and it's early morning 
so I'd probably at the moment have it set on cloudy but a bit later it looks like the sun may come out so I'd change it to sunlight and that helps a lot you can also change your white balance in any imaging software that you get like Adobe Lightroom which I use I found that to be the best I do have Luminar as well but I pretty much always go to Adobe Lightroom that can also organize my pictures as well so I pretty much use Lightroom the white balance I don't know too much about um, just that they're all different settings and it changes your image as well Ooh, some flying ducks I should have got a picture of them um, there's also um, exposure compensation which works pretty much in tandem with your ISO if you're using um, automatic ISO which I, a lot of you may know from previous videos I use a lot because we're walking about and doing seabirds and everything it changes from dark to light so much I can't keep up with it we're just using the thumb dials on the back so I use auto ISO which is where your exposure compensation comes in handy now I've been having a little bit of trouble with this um, I can never remember which way to turn it so it's been basically I'll turn it one or two stops one way and have a look on the back and if everything gets blown out then I'll, I remember it's the other way <laughs> but that's just me I mean sometimes I have a poor memory for these things but yeah you want to like today where it's cloudy if you want to use a if your wider aperture isn't letting in enough light you can use exposure compensation to go towards I think it's the plus side and it'll make your image a little bit brighter um, I'll maybe try and do a picture of this there's not really much to see at the moment Let me, um, if I take a picture of this stick here now if oh I'm sorry I did that wrong I'll put the exposure compensation ISO let's go with ISO 500 and my aperture is down at 5 so I'll take a picture of this stick okay that's pretty dark so now if I up the ISO compensation to one stop take another yeah that's a lot brighter actually so if I I'll just check them on the back here yeah that's a lot brighter so I'll put them images up next and you can have a look for yourself um, so yeah if it's dark you want to go to the plus side if it's bright you want to go to the minus side but if you're shooting a white bird in a dark setting sometimes you need to go and it's but it's dark, uh, sunny but they're in a the shade <laughs> and the sun's catching the um, white feathers you may need to put the exposure compensation to the minus side just so it can pull down the highlights and your image won't be what they call blown out is where it's the white's just so white you can't see any detail at all so that's a little bit about the exposure compensation how do I compose my images with wildlife and birds you want to be at eye level I can't stress this enough a lot of images that people take is where they're sat up and then shooting down or up the images don't capture the bird at a very good angle it's always best to be on a plane with them now I'll show you some 
images of what I mean and I've done a vlog before on composition yeah anything you want to be at eye level really now you'll see people laying on the ground and you some people may think well they're crazy for laying on the ground but once you see the image that they've taken you can understand why because if you if you stood up taking an image of say a duck beside a river or something it doesn't look as good as someone who's laid down on the ground and got that eye level to the duck so that's why I always try to get as low or as to eye level as the subject that I'm shooting so I just saw the grey heron <laughs> and uh, so yeah <clears throat> eye level's the way to go for me so yeah um, so that's a bit, a bit about compensation um, I think next is how do I approach animals and wildlife you don't want to disturb the wildlife at all costs if it means missing the picture miss it you do not want to disturb them I cannot stress this enough that's why I like a long lens stay as far back as possible and let the subject just go about doing its thing you do not want to disturb it you disturb them it could have an impact on them breeding if you disturb them and they've got young they may abandon the young then the young will die uh, if it's say birds and you disturb them they may leave the nest and not come back and if they've got young chicks in the nest them chicks are gonna die so you'll see a massive decline in wildlife yeah there's some people who don't like or some nuisance birds but it's the impact of people that's and cities and everything that's been impacting them so they've taken away their natural habitat and they've had to start um, foraging in dustbins and stuff for food because there's not enough in the wild to keep them alive so that's why a lot of foxes now near big cities are moving into the cities because there's not enough in that area in the wild to help the population survive um, but yeah like the other week I was at Studley Royal now that's a deer park where there's wardens and everyone looking after the deer but out in the wild it's very hard unless you know where to go and how to approach them to find the deer because uh, they're very wary about people now that, a lot of that's come about with hunting but they don't like loud shots especially when it's aimed at them so any noise deer can pick up they've got a fantastic hearing and smell I'm not too sure about their eyesight that's a whole new subject for a different time I think maybe next year when I try to go out doing the deer rut again but yeah you don't want to disturb animals now here where I am today I'm at a local nature reserve and they've put up hides normally you'll be as quiet as possible in these hides but the wildlife around are used to it I mean there's birds flying past all the time as you can guess I, I get easily distracted when I see a bird <laughs> I mean there's all sorts here there's wrens, house sparrows hedge sparrows the waterfowl well I've done a video on that before as well but yeah that's uh, a little bit about wildlife just please don't disturb the wildlife if it means missing the shot miss it you can always try again some other time they're not well hopefully they're not going away but if you disturb them they will do what else some exciting news uh, I've recently got my website up and running to pretty much the way I want it 
I've got images up there available for download. Uh, pretty, I think it's relatively cheap price. Um, let me know what you think. Anyone who wants to download an image can do at the moment and get 25% off using the promo code below. Um, it's SVP all set. Now the SVP is capitalized. Best thing to do is just copy it and paste it and it'll give you 25% off your total order of what's in the shop. Um, just gonna next year gonna be running some uh, photography workshops I want to call them but you can also maybe use the promo code to get money off or just email me I've got my email address on my website as well steve at steveverityphotography.com and my website's obviously steveverityphotography.com but yeah I've got that website up and running there's images I'm looking into companies that where I can do canvases and prints so if anyone knows of a good company I got a, a print not so long back done myself from um, a company down in London and I wasn't too happy with the quality of it I got back in touch with them and I'm waiting to see if they'll do something about it but yeah so website's up and running at the end of each video I've had my website but there's always been something funny about it but now I can accept online orders take payments through major credit cards and PayPal I've also got on there where you can uh, spread the cost out as well a little bit like finance through layby so don't, you don't have to worry too much in these hard times about paying it all up front you can pay it over time if you wish well this might be end of part one uh, I think it's going to be a two parters so tune in next week for part two and if you've liked this vlog if it's helped you click the thumbs up if you're new here please consider subscribing and if you do don't forget to hit that little bell icon and it'll notify you of all videos I put up. So take care and we'll see you again soon.